Hey guys, Cow here, bringing you another video. This is going to be one of the first magic videos I make, um, and it's kind of something that I've been thinking about when it comes to power level. So here I have power level on Reddit. I just typed in MTG power level into Google, and this is what I got the first thing ooh, that came out. I'm not going to read this. If you are interested in what this person has to say and how to adjust your level, definitely go check it out. But I guess what I'm saying here is kind of uh, contradicting what he is saying because I'm trying to say my own thing um, and say that it is better than this one. But I am taking this person's tiers. Competitive, optimized, tuned, focused, unfocused. And these are tiers that should be easier to follow you shouldn't have to think about how strong a card is because if we know things about people judging their own cards especially when you have thousands maybe even millions of players those each individual players will have different ideas on how strong a certain card is based on their experience and uh, certain cards will seem stronger to someone that is less experienced um as you get more experience, you'll realize that that card maybe wasn't as good or understand that some card that you thought was bad is actually very good. So I'm going to be using Pokemon as an example. If you don't know Pokemon, don't worry. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just using it as an example because I think that they do a very good job at this. I will say there's about a thousand Pokemon and 20,000 cards. So there's a big difference there. But in the Pokemon format, they have Ubers, which are competitive. You have OU, which is overused, or we'll use optimized. Uh, you have RU, which is underused, which is tuned. You have RU, rare, rarely used, which is your focused. And we have your PU, which is your stinky, no one uses these cards, which is your unfocused slash jank deck. I'm going to be using the Pokemon terms because they're easier for me to um, kind of say it comes out naturally because I'm kind of using their format, but Ubers is broken. I'll use, I'll say CDH for Ubers. OU, overused, you're going to see a lot of it. Underused, you don't see as much of it, but it's prevalent. Rarely used, you don't really see it. Never used, you never see it in PU are like really bad things. So I'm just going to talk about this really quick and why I think it'll be good. So if you don't want to see certain cards, right? Uh, we're going to go to, um, let's go to EDH rec. Let's go salt TS cards, MTG, and EDH rec. If you don't want to see some of these cards, stasis, winter orb, static orb, uh, just go down the list. Um, you should be able to just play a format that doesn't run them, you know? You can... I don't want... I don't care how bad your Jinkdaxis deck. I don't care if your Jinkdaxis uh, 99 lands. That never wins. But when you drop Jin, everyone cries. That You should be able to avoid certain cards, you know? Uh, and uh, by having these tiers, will allow you to do so. Now let me explain. I think that each card should be put in a different tier. Uh, so that you can more easily understand what is good and what is, uh, let's say, not very good. Let's say you have a Rhystic Study, right? Rhystic Study is a good card and should not be played in low power. Should never be played. I don't care how bad your deck is. This is too good. And, uh, but it's also, like, you don't want to only play this in CDH because it's, it's a CDH staple, but it's not broken, broken. So, having it in the optimized or overused category, because it is used a lot and you see it a lot, makes sense. You come in and I say, I have a, a, an optimized or overused OU deck. So, you'll know that you'll probably run into Rhystic Study. Um, but Rhystic Study is too good to be run in those lower tiers. I'm going to click on Thassa's Oracle really quick. And a lot of people might say, easy CDH, easy highest tier. But Thassa's Oracle is not good. It's not great. Now a lot of people clicked off the video because I said that. Uh, let me explain. So Thassa's Oracle. Let's go here. Comes down and wins the game if you have no library. It's hard to get no library. What's easy to do is click or use Demonic Consultation. And uh, then the library is gone. This is your example of a CDH 
uber card, something that you shouldn't have to see. So it makes it so that people who like Thassa's Oracle and want to deck themselves don't have to only play CDH because this effect on its own isn't what's breaking the card. It's this effect on its own combined with Demonic Consultation, combined with Hermit Druid, combined with all these cards that can kind of murk your whole deck really quickly. And that is what is ruining people's experience. So Demonic Consultation would be a competitive card. But I think that Thassa's Oracle would be here, tuned, mid-level, because uh, decking yourself is a mid-level strategy. There's self-mill, um, and efficient self-mill cards might go higher up here, but Thassa itself isn't very good. It can go here, it can even maybe go here. Uh, but just like individually ranking cards, I feel makes it easier, because let's say I want to play in a high-powered deck, and someone says, hey, my deck isn't very good, but they have Thassa demonic consultation and then they just win but they have like it's fine because they have no tutors it's, it's still as a feels bad you got janked out by these broken cards you know when you wanted to play a not broken format and i think being able to kind of just know hey i don't like playing against smothering tides i don't like playing against rhystic study i just want to play in this mid-level deck being able to guarantee that that doesn't happen and that all the decks in that format are kind of tuned around this idea that each card is ranked individually is very, uh, I think it will be very exciting, very good for certain players and easier for newer players who don't have access to like these powerful cards can build a budget focused deck and play against other focused players. And there will be metas within those. If let's say the person loves focused and then they notice that um, a great card that I think should be in focused, let's go into uh the top cards, top cards. A great focus card is Crotion Grip. Where are you, Crotion Grip? Come on. I know you're in here. Maybe you're not in here. Well, it's not here. I just recorded it and I thought it was bad, so then I recorded it again. But now Crotion Grip is nowhere to be seen. That's crazy. But uh, Crotion Grip is a good card. Let's go just Crocean Grip. There it is. Three mana removal. Not very good. It comes down a split second. A very good mechanic, but it's on a bad card. You just destroy a one for one. This is a fun card. A lot of people like this card, but they can't play it because it's bad. And they're go or not bad, but it's not good in the formats that they're playing. They're Local game store is just too powerful, you know, and they bring these decks that they say are low power, but actually they're not because they run efficient removal and you're just getting boxed out, outvalued. Crotion Grip will see a lot of play in these lower formats and make it so that certain cards that come out in secret layers, like I know Crotion Grip came out in a secret layer. It sucks that you bought a secret layer and you can't use your card because you have to run a more powerful removal like Beast Within, which isn't very powerful on its own, but it's better than Crotion Grip. Um, and let's say, like, where are you? Naturalized? Uh, or, yeah, uh, natural nature, ah, Nature's Claim. It does the same thing for one mana, and uh, one life is negligible. So Nature's Claim would probably be a, in an optimized or tuned environment. Probably tuned, because that effect isn't very good. Optimized might be your... Uh, Force of Vigor. Let me uh, look it up for you guys. Force of Vigor. Force of Vigor comes down for free and takes out two. This is definitely a better card, so it should be played in a better format. You know? You shouldn't have to box with Force of Vigor when you're running Force of uh, Crossing Grip. Another example is good board wipes would be in this optimized place. You know, maybe Toxic Deluge isn't optimized. Um, and tuned board wipes are just the ones that are worse, you know, like Day of Judgment. And uh, like lower, even lower down, you put like Planar Cleansing or these really expensive board wipes, you know, uh, that for the most part can't be played anymore because the decks are just too good. Or And uh, there is no real way of getting good games in with your bad deck because people will run good cards in their bad decks. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just not much you can do. If you're not, uh, if you're running a low power and you get an Elish Norn Toxerol dropped on you, 
um, because they're playing Reanimator, or they just tap out and play it, uh, you're just, just not going to have a good time, you know? And I think this is a good way to make sure that everyone has a good time and they can really focus on whatever game mode they like to bring. And then people can just make, what's it called, one, two, three, four, five, five decks. And as long as they stay within the the constraints that they need to kind of follow, you'll have better games. Uh, I'm going to go down the list right here and kind of quickly rapid fire what I think these are. Soul Ring should be an OU overused, not hyper competitive, because that is where your mana crypts go, your free cards go, you know? Arcane Signet is your classic too. We've gotten to a point where two mana rocks are like, that's what you do. They're overused. They should be an OU. I can see an argument for having them lower down, um, just so that they can compete with the green decks who are going to go kind of crazy. So we can have two mana rocks are in your normal deck. I think a lot of normal deck people are wanting their rocks to come down on two, you know? Uh, and that is fine, you know? So maybe mana rocks that come down on three are in your focused. Or your jank decks, you know? Or mana rocks that come down on four. So it's just kind of how quickly you want to play. If a card is really fast, it should be in a really fast format. If a card is really slow, it should be in a slower format. Um, and you're going to see that as kind of a trend as I rank some of these cards. I think Swords of Power Shares is way too good um, to be played in slower formats. You know, I, I'm i playing a meme deck where I get the funny card Colossal Dreadnought out. I spent six mana working my butt off trying to get it out. And it gets Swords. I go down, I paid six mana, you got rid of it for, five, uh, for one. I'm now five mana down and I've wasted my entire turn. Uh, the pain is less... Uh, it stings a little bit less when they have Beast Within, you know, does the same thing. But now they have to cost, pay three mana. You're only three mana down. And it's an instant, so they had to kind of hold up that mana. They could do less on their turn because they held up that interaction. Whereas they could probably still play out their turn and then swords you, you know. You essentially got time walked. Uh, essentially had your whole turn removed and then they got another turn by saving up their one mana. So... Uh, that's kind of what I'm saying. Quick cards deserve quick formats. Cultivate comes out on three. It should be in your three mana rock category, I think. It should be in, uh, or maybe like tuned. Because the problem with if you make all the rocks too good, then lower formats, kind of green goes crazy. But that's kind of what green does anyways. Um, and of course, if a card's too strong to be in there, that's the reason why you can change the cards in there. We need a big team. Um, and I think that's just kind of the thing holding us this back is that you need established people that know what they're talking about. Because if you just have a forum that people just go, I want this to be pushed up, this to be put down, uh, everything will be in competitive and optimized. And then everything bad will be down here. And even then, there will be stuff people are complaining about how good Crotion Grip is and that they can't respond to it. So uh, Counter Spell comes down on two. Uh, competitive Counter Spells are zero cost you know they're your force of wills um fl uh, not fluster storm force of will uh force of negation i think pact of negation is fine because you have to pay five later it might go in optimized maybe even tuned because it's a five mana counter spell you know um as like options but uh your zero mana cost your what's it called fierce guardianship you know Probably should stay in competitive. I can see Force of Fierce Guardianship dropping down because so many people maybe want to play it, but at the same time, then you're in the... It's the people that want to play their broken stuff in lower formats that are kind of ruining experiences for other people. So having uh, your optimized counter spells being in well, that cost one, let's say Swan Song, Fluster Storm, those should be in optimized, you know? It shouldn't only be in competitive decks because people have them. Um, and... Uh, Competitive decks are for the competitive cards. You're not going to run Force of Will in your in your casual deck. I've done that once by accident because I was like, hey guys, this deck isn't very good. I just had a Force of Will lying around and uh, I wanted to put it in because I bought it for my powerful blue deck and I stopped playing blue. So I just had these powerful cards and it was powerful and it overran people because I could just do whatever I want and not have to worry about getting countered and then they also had to just worry about getting countered you know so uh counter spell comes out on two i think it's great for that mid-level tuned because zero one two 
Counterspell comes down on two. Beast Within is your staple focused card. Um, maybe you can even do Jank for it, you know? It's good removal, but I guess Meme deck should have meme removal, bad removal. Uh, so maybe we just keep it in focus because it comes down on three, takes out anything. And uh, not having that option lower on, especially in certain colors, uh, could be problematic. But um, it is good because zero, one, two, three cast removal. It makes sense to me. But And it's a loved card and everyone runs it. So uh, that's great. Rampy Growth comes out on two. Uh, probably in your tuned, you know, optimized. People probably don't run Rampant Growth, but it does come down pretty early. But I think Tuned is fine. I don't think you should be running in Focus because you're, we're not running rocks that come down on 2 in Focus. We're running rocks that come down on 3. And why would something that is comes down on 2, which is better, and is a land, which is better, uh, be ranked uh, lower and put in Focus? I think it would stay in Tuned, you know? Uh, these two mana rocks come down on Tuned, you know? Tuned. Uh, we just talked about swords, you know. We have we just talked about two mana rock, two mana rock. This is the same as cultivate. It would go down one, going into your tuned decks, you know, focus decks. Uh, Psych Rift, very powerful board wipe would go in OU, you know. I don't think it's so broken that it should stay in competitive only, but Psych Rift is a good board wipe that wins you games, and no one wants to play against it. So, uh, having it be out of the common tuned format is probably for the best you know it's really good and that's why it's hated um so if you want to play high power you should expect psych rift um and if you're not playing high power you shouldn't have to deal with psych rift you know uh we have far seek which is your two your two mana two mana two mana chaos warp is the same as your beast within we have blasphemous act which is an efficient board wipe probably but i don't think people are really calling for it to be it's too strong so probably in your casual format is where most of your board wipes would go um i don't think there are really many ou only board wipes or optimized uh board wipes besides psych rift so because a lot of them are i think it's just because psych rift is just one-sided that's that and an instant and bounces literally everything is the reason why it's just it's crazy you know uh rustic study wouldn't only be in it would be in optimized just because i think if you want to play high power magic you should be able to run rustic study um and i think rustic study is fair enough that it doesn't go into competitive whereas all this fast mana and demonic consultation probably go but you can also probably blur the line i don't think many optimized players would care about be running a few competitive cards but of course uh they should be but i mean uh, if i make these like blurry lines then it, it should be pretty straightforward optimized you shouldn't have to deal with uh competitive cards so and you can always play your optimal cards in competitive decks you can't it's not like i'm saying only competitive cards can be played in only competitive decks it's pretty much if you are in a tier, you can use all the cards below that tier as well as the cards in that tier, but you can't go up. So focus deck can't use tuned, optimize, or competitive cards. But I think that one was pretty self-explanatory. Smothering Tides is another great example of something that should be in high power, um, but also dodged in these um, these levels of play. You know, of course as you essentially ban certain cards from these levels of play, certain cards will of course get stronger. Like wheels will become stronger as their main the main deterrent at Smothering Tithe is gone. You might see more Nekuzar Wheel being a very powerful tuned deck. Um but maybe not as powerful as one may think as maybe like Wheel of Fortune is kept in optimal optimized and a lot of the efficient wheel cards might stay in this high power uh area you know as a, a nekuzar might get very powerful but that's going to be it for the video i think uh as we keep going down there are like of course cards and you can make your own tiers for them as you wish but like anguish on making is not better than swords you know you're going to cut it for swords and uh, but anguish on making is a cool card and generous gift is a cool card and um like negate is cool 
but uh, especially this one, <laughs> Ultimatum. Uh, it's psych rift, but sorcery with a very restrictive cost, and I think that you should be able to run it, you know? Uh, but you're not going to be running it because it's just too slow, it's easily countered, and uh, our format is just too fast, and people don't know what power levels are. So, uh, that's going to be it. Oh, Dockside. I'll, I'll say my final thing on Dockside. Dockside is a competitive card, and you shouldn't be running it in your casual deck, you know? I don't care that you're running a, a power to Corval deck that has absolutely nothing but runs Dockside and wins, you know? It's, it's like, it's too good, you know? Um, and I'm sorry if you have Dockside and you want to play it, um, but at the same time, you're probably not, uh, it's probably ruining someone's day, you know, they came in to play some casual magic and you drop Dockside on them, get 15 mana and just drop a 15 cost thing that is 15 cost, so it's probably going to win them the game, you know, I just, uh, Dockside is powerful, you know, maybe putting it in OU just so people can use it, but I don't think you should see it outside of uh, CDH. Even people in CDH want it gone, so yeah, uh, it does make it so that sometimes you'll pull a card and you won't be able to use it because it's just not, it's too powerful for your format, but I think that's healthy. And proxies are now okay and have always been okay. So if you really want to use Dockside, proxy a competitive deck and play your Dockside, you know, and slowly get those competitive cards as you continue playing and learning more about the game. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for my video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, it's kind of recap. Uh, I do think that you should be able to have these tiers. Like if I want to play OU or Ubers, I shouldn't be able to use like these broken things. Not to just talk about Pokemon, but like, I shouldn't be able to use the best of the best. Um, it shouldn't be a scale. Let me say, let me put it that way. I shouldn't be able to use the best card in the game um, because I put bad stuff in my deck. You know, you run the best stuff in the game, you're going to play against the best stuff in the game. You're going to be tested as a deck builder um, in all formats. You, you will, bad decks can still have bad pilots you know it could you could run the bad bad cards you know and lose to someone that runs good bad cards uh or knows how to synergize better with those good bad cards there's a there's a lot you can have people that specialize in everything um and there will be metas for each individual tier and there will be staples of each individual tier uh soul ring will be a staple and optimized um and is staple and competitive you know because it's broken um but like in optimized, you'll probably have natural nature, the the one that destroys a artifact or enchantment for one here, very common. Um, but in focus, where you don't have options to those ones, cross and grip, man, it's going to be everywhere. Uh, and I think that's funny. I think that's fun. And but of course, everyone is subjective, and maybe this video won't get any views. But I just want to put it out there in case someone stumbles upon it and thinks it's cool. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.